In this episode, we show you exactly how to pre-flight and start up the world's most searched helicopter, the Mosquito Helicopter by Composite FX. The world's most internet searched personal helicopter is manufactured in the small town of Trenton, Florida and is available as a kit that you can actually build at home in your own garage or workshop. It's a true single seat heli with traditional controls and guess what? There is a jet engine option. Let's jump in to the pre-flight of the Mosquito Helicopter. All right, so a bit of a treat today. We go through the startup procedure of your, your jet, which is the uh, XET? CT, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so walk us through the startup procedure of uh, the jet version. Okay, well, the XET uh, obviously is a turbine powered. It's a T62-2A1 engine. Uh, what we do when the engine is cold, usually we'll use a, a start box here and you'll see it's basically a 24 volt system uh, it is not required but usually if the engine's cold it just helps in the assistance and we don't put as much stress on the starter once the engine's warmed up then generally we don't use that at all the batteries do have the capability of doing three to four starts without the assistance of that box if you so desire to and you just do it, throw it on the charger for in between after the three or four flights yeah well we can uh as far as the the box you're talking about as far as the onboard, oh, oh the the on house batteries, a 15 to 20 minute flight will recharge the batteries any depletion that you've done during the startup. So if you wanted to top them off before you shut it down, 15 20 minute flight will do that. Okay, so uh, during the startup process, it's obviously a lot different than doing a piston engine. It's, a piston engine is just a matter of priming it and cranking it and start. So a turbine engine, um, what we do for it is uh, we have what we refer to as a soft ramp starter. So this is the start button on the cyclic here, the green button. And when we make contact with that, there is a 10 second period of time. It's a programmable ramp up box that takes it from zero volts all the way to 24 volts. That way the starter is not engaging real hard and creating damage. So that's the first process and you hold that button until you get to roughly 20, 22, 23 percent of turbine wheel speed. Once you've achieved that, now the FCU or the fuel controller unit has, has enough pressure now that the startup injector will work. So at that point, we would hit this small button, the, the blue button on the bottom side with your little finger. What that does is it starts the igniter box and it also starts the, uh, the start fuel solenoid. At that point, you, we verify that there's a fire in the can. And you can tell that by one of two ways. You either hear it boom, it'll, it'll, it'll be a subtle uh, shock wave that comes out the exhaust. Or you watch your exhaust gas temperature right here. So if there is no fire, just the compression of the air alone can drive that up to 150 degrees. So if we want to verify if, that there is a fire in the can uh, for startup process, we want to see that somewhere around 200, 250 degrees. Now, once we verify that there's a fire in there, then we want to switch on the, uh, the run fuel injectors and the run solenoid. So that is done on this switch. So this would be up, and a lot of you fixed wing guys are probably looking at that and say, gee, my God, that switch, that cover is backwards. Well, there's a reason that is done that way. We can go into that at a different time. But the biggest thing is for emergencies. If you were to accidentally roll this aircraft over, this turbine engine has more than enough power to actually, you will not stall the engine. A piston engine, you can stall. The turbine, you cannot. It's running 60,000 RPMs, and so if you consider the reduction of 10 to 1 on top of that, the amount of torque it provides, you can share off a 
a flex pack or shear off a drive shaft or something like that, but the engine's not going to stall. So in that situation, we want to provide more than one way for the pilot on board to stop that engine. And that's why we put this backwards. Flying a helicopter, both feet, both hands are full. There's nothing in the way of this dash, so you can't accidentally hit it. So you physically have to hit it and shut it down. That gives you that option in that emergency case. So that's why that's backwards. Okay, so once we've started the start fuel nozzles, then the RPMs slowly will start to come on. So the start nozzle is actually lighting each one of those run nozzles one at a time. There's five of them in there. And you can actually see on the gauges and you can hear it as the RPMs increase. Now how that works is, is on the collective here we have a throttle just like any other helicopter. Increase throttle, decrease throttle. So we have to be able to control the RPMs of the engine because if we hit all the fuel all at once we could over temp the engine because it's trying to turn a 19 and a half foot flywheel up the top plus another three foot fly 40 inch flywheel at the back at the same time that takes a lot of energy to go that starts engaging at approximately 50 percent of turbine wheel speed well, at, tur at 50 percent the turbine wheel speed that engine barely has enough horsepower at that point just to run itself, let alone try to turn a 19 half foot flywheel or a 40 inch flywheel. So we have to introduce the fuel slowly, and we do that mechanically with the throttle. And what it is, it's a fuel bypass system. So when we start this on, this throttle is closed in normal terms, but in our terms, it's a needle valve. So the needle valve is open, allowing the fuel to bypass. We're not sending full pressure to the to the main engine fuel nozzles. And then as we close that nozzle valve or open the throttle, it increases the fuel pressure and the fuel quantity go into the engine which increases the RPMs. So we can control how fast we ramp it up, a direct result of how what the temperature is on the exhaust gas temperature gauge. So we don't want to add too much to fuel too fast because it's going to over temp on us and we can burn the engine down. We don't want to go too slow because we don't want to hang on the starter too long and burn the starter up. Now a note about the starter is the starter in a turbine engine is the exact opposite of you would find in your car, your truck, or an automobile, or a bulldozer, or anything else. In, in a piston engine, the starter takes the biggest amount of power and the biggest hit when you engage it. In a turbine, it actually, as the RPMs increase, there's more draw on it because you're turning a compressor. So when the compressor is sitting at zero, obviously it's not requiring a lot of horsepower to make that. Now, this motor will make 1,750 cubic feet of air a second. So there is a lot of strain on this thing by the time you get it up. So for that reason, you don't want to hang on to the start any longer than you have to. You want to get it up the RPMs, get the fire lit, get the engine running autonomously, you're off the starter. So the process, start 20-25%, we're going to start fuel, start igniter, get the fire started, we're going to bring in the main slowly at 50%, we're going to let off for the starter. We don't need a starter anymore. At that point, we can throttle up slowly, watching our exhaust gas temperatures, making sure we don't overheat. At 75%, we're going to turn off the start fuel and the igniter. From 75% on up, we're running 100% autonomously off the main fuels. Now the main fuel is going to run continuously from that point forward. On the dash, you'll see three little indicator lights here. There's a starter light, there's a main fuel light, and an igniter light. Igniter light and fuel, uh, start fuel is the same one. So the amber ones are the ones you do not want to see lit when you're ready to take off and fly. They're only there as long as those systems are on. So it's a reminder to turn those systems off. The green light, that's a go light. That's your main fuel, you're off and running. So when you shut the turbine down now, you come back and you land, typically we will throttle it back somewhere between 10, 20% on the throttle, just to give it a little bit of a cool down. And then at that point, we just hit the main fuel and everything shuts off. So that's the start up and the shutdown procedure. Let's go fly. Let's go fly. Coming up, gentlemen, start your engines. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com. 
Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more.
Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode.